And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. And today we're taking a look at Project Elite. This is the new version from Come On Games. Project Elite is one of my favorite games of all time. In fact, one year in my top 100, it was in the number one slot. I really, really like Project Elite. Um, I played the original one, which was a joint production uh, between Artipia and Draw Lab, and the miniatures in it were horrific. Some of the worst miniatures ever in a game, and I still love the game. Um, uh, I partially helped and helped Artipia get together with Come On and make this game. I was very excited to see it remade with great miniatures. We all know Come On does good ones. So this is a spoiler, I suppose, as we come in that I, I already like Project Elite a lot. We played it live on our channel back when it was on Kickstarter and now the final product's here. Now, I'm going to be going through all the different expansions and stuff that came with the Kickstarter as time goes by, but here I'm just talking about the base game of Project Elite. It is a real-time cooperative game in which you are a bunch of Marines that are just blowing down aliens. It is fun, but the whole game isn't real-time. It is eight rounds, and there are two minutes of action in each of the eight rounds, and then the rest of that's planning and preparation. Let me show you. In this game, you're going to play with one of the two sides of the board, and then you're also going to pick a mission. So I'm playing on this side of the board. Um, I have set up here the extermination mission, but there's also a capture mission, demolition, recon, and exploration. Each one has some slightly different rules. Depending on how many players are in the game, uh, it will add these different tokens possibly on these different numbers that these numbers are for. So in this mission, basically the players are going to have to go and blow up these four spots. That's how the extermination mission works. Each player is going to take a character. Characters have this board here where you keep your weapons that you have and items. Um, you're going to have hit points you'll be keeping track of and a special ability. You'll take a miniature that matches that and place it here in the starting area. You are defending this area from a Aliens. The game is going to take place over either eight rounds if you haven't accomplished your mission, which in this case is blow up these spots. At the end of those eight rounds, you'll lose. If any alien gets into the base here, you will also lose. And if a player is killed, you lose. Each round, you're going to be turning over an event card to show what happens. Now, the event card deck is going to be made up basically on... There's going to be eight events, that's how you keep track of the rounds, and it's going to be made up on how difficult you want it to be, because you have events that are no effect, and the, the easier the game is, the more of these you'll put in there, or maybe just something simple like you're going to do an extra spawn card this turn. Uh, the more difficult events are going to come out, and this is going to cause a negative thing to all the players, unless players put a certain amount of dice on their turns. These are really nasty, you don't want to play with too many of them, and the game will tell you how many cards to put in to this event deck. So the first thing you'll do in your turn is you will draw that event card. Then players are going to draw a certain number of swarm spawn cards, uh, basically again on how hard the game is. So like for example on easy mode we would draw one per player. So if we're playing with three players I would turn this one on. This is going to bring three runners out on spawn point number one and then they're going to immediately activate. So I look on the board, spawn point number one in this game they're randomly put out is right here. So I put three of these in the spawn points next to it, and they're instantly going to activate. In this case, they move three spaces. So maybe one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you move on the board following the different arrows. Uh, these runners don't really do much, but they run really fast. So we're going to need to kill them before they get into the enemy base. If you spawn creatures... At a spawn point, and let's say someone comes on top of them, you push them out of your way. The monsters are going to keep pushing towards your base, coming at it. So you're going to draw some of these spawn cards. You're also going to turn over a boss spawn card. Now, some of these boss spawn cards happily say all clear, but sometimes they'll bring out some nasty monster, like this reanimated Harrier, who we move any aliens a total of four spaces combined. These boss monsters usually have more than one hit point, and they can do all sorts of things. 
Like this guy can hit anyone. Heroes within range two take a damage. Roll hit die for each hero within range four. They take damage on a three or higher. This one drops slime tokens all over the place. This one drops acid tokens. This one here will uh, put out a swarm spawn card, and people, the new aliens will swarm next to him. A allies, aliens within range three move a space, and there's all kinds, but there's also a lot of all clear cards in here. So a boss will hopefully not be showing up every phase, but if you have the boss, you take the corresponding miniature, and they're going to start in the spawn point and be moving around the board too. At this point, we do the action phase. Action phases are two minutes. When everyone's ready to go, you're going to start it. And now the game takes place in real time over two minutes. During this time, each player has four dice. They're going to be rolling these dice as fast as they can and assigning these dice to cards that they have or using dice to take actions. The only problem is every time you roll this red alien move side of a die, and it's a different color so you notice, before you do anything else, you must pick an alien on the board and move them one space following the arrow. And these aliens are going to keep moving. You can ask someone else to move the aliens for you, but you're going to have to do that before you resolve the rest of your dice. What you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to kill aliens. You'll often do that with weapons. Everyone starts with a basic weapon. You'll be drafting those at the beginning of the game. And this weapon here, for example, has a range of two. And I need to roll a gun to activate it. So once I put a gun on here, I can take that die off. Say I'm activating it. It's a range of two, so I'm within range of this creature. I roll one die, and I need a four or higher. Boom, I got him. I just throw him off the board. And that's all you do. If I had missed, well, the gun, I would have to get another gun on here to roll the die again. So there are various basic weapons that you will have. Some of them need more than one icon. This needs a gun and a wrench icon. But it lets you roll two dice, so I could get two hits with this one. This one lets me roll three dice, but it needs five or higher to hit on those dice. Players can also, once per round, if you're on one of these search tokens, you can use a magnifying glass to search. Each spot can only be searched once per round. But when that happens, you'll draw the top three cards of the search deck and pick one to keep. Some of them are items, like this power item. Uh, I can prevent all damage I would take from swarms until the end of the round. Well, that's pretty cool. But you'll notice that these have a red background, which means when you put the die there, it stays there to the end of the round. It doesn't come off. And you can hear the alarm just went off telling me that the round is over. Of course, I'm explaining here. But you can find all kinds of cool weapons in this pile. So, for example, this one here has infinite range, but it only shoots in a straight line. And it can use either one of those symbols, and then one and hits on a five or higher. So there's all kinds of weapons and cool things here. Here's a boss killer. Each hit does two health, which is good, because almost every monster has one health, but the bosses have more than one. Now, this one rolls two dice and four plus damage on that. And so there's all kinds of things that you will find. And in fact, if you kill bosses, you may get alien tech. And when you find these, they're even better weapons. Although, like this one here, lets me roll three dice, hits on a two or higher. But you'll notice the die there, when I put it there, stays on that card. So you're going to be running around the board. You're going to have to roll these icons to move it. Every time you roll one of these, you'll be able to move your people around the board. And then you're also trying to accomplish your mission. You're not just trying to kill aliens. In this case, you need to get next to these and spend gun symbols. You'll notice these are red, so they'll stay there till the end of the round. But once one or multiple players collectively puts them here at the end of the round, they'll come off. This token is removed, and if you do that to all four of those, you win. But again, you got to do that and then get off, get back to your base, escape without letting any aliens through. And the aliens are just going to keep spawning and spawning and spawning. At the end of a round, after players are done with their two minutes, it's possible that some of the aliens, like this one here, will shoot. This one here, if it's adjacent to you, will attack you. And you'll roll dice for them to see if they hit your character. Each player has a damage track that they're going to keep track of their damage that they get. If aliens push you, you'll also be taking damage. And if you lose six damage, or if once you pass a line, you lose a die. Um, each, each character is different. This character only ever loses this one die. He actually starts with a locked die, so he only has three dice. 
but he also can re-roll miss every time he does a weapon. So that's kind of cool. While she has her two lines are here, and in an action phase, you can move to the three space to activate a weapon without any dice on it for free. Well, that's pretty awesome. And then here, you do not suffer damage when an alien pushes you, so he doesn't have to worry about that. And you'll keep track of the damage. And again, each of the missions is different. One of the missions, you're trying to trap aliens. And this, in this particular one, you're just trying to blow these up. And there's even two sides of the board. I just showed you the, the that side. The other board is kind of a long ways board where you start in this base and the aliens are coming in and moving in and you need to stop them. But that's basically how it plays. So as with most come on games, all the miniatures come in nicely packed uh, plastic inserts, which I always get rid of because I like to put them in bags myself. The monsters all look like nasty creatures, and <laughs> happily I can tell what they are compared to uh, the the, um, the ones from the original game, which look like blobs of plastic. Comes with a timer here, which you don't necessarily need a timer, but hey, you know, it's... You know, you could, most people use their phones, but it's nice that a timer comes with the game. And hey, for once, Come On has provided enough dice for everyone to play with. And the dice, I mean, these are kind of very generic, basic, six-sided dice, but you know what? They're easy to read. I really like that. Also, I like how the board looks. This is a good alien-type game. And there is a lot of extra content that you can get for this, but I feel like there's enough involved with this game. There's enough stuff going on, and uh, the component quality, as always, is quite good. I am really happy with this reprint. The game itself, I mean, everything about it, all the production is better than the original one, especially the miniatures. They're just so much better looking. Uh, so fantastic. And the cards and everything, all the changes, they made very minor changes. They made changes on how damage was dealt. That works for me. They made changes on how the missions were done and the bosses come out. There used to be elite monsters and boss monsters. Now they're just all boss monsters. It Everything works fine. I love this game. Yes, you can have a really bad game of this if you play with uh, on the harder levels. Uh, uh, the There could be a lot of events come out and boss monsters. There could just be a whole pile. But it's so short. I mean, not that it's short, short. The game is about 45 minutes to an hour. Because even though there's only two-minute turns, there's a lot of talking between them. What are we going to do next? But what I like about this game. So, first of all, I love the fact that I get to be awesome in this game. So many games now have these aliens and things that are hard to hit and stuff. In this game, I'm not saying the game is easy, but it feels like you're doing something. Because you're sitting there going, I'm killing this alien. I'm thinking, you're just throwing aliens off the board and their plastic measures they will be fine. You're like, ah, I killed six aliens this turn. That's awesome. You know, you feel like you've done something. Even if you lost, you're like, we lost, but we took them down with us. And I really enjoy that. The whole system of rolling dice, placing those dice, using those dice to shoot guns and getting extra guns, getting attachments for your guns, is just so entertaining and fun. I also like the fact that the game is paced really well. Yes, you're doing that crazy stuff for two minutes. But then you stop, it's over, and you're like, okay. And then you move the aliens, they shoot at you, you spawn the new ones, you talk about, okay, you're going to go over there and accomplish that mission. I'm going to go over here, you talk about what you're going to do, and then you go for it. And so it's two minutes of intense action, but not so intense that we have a time to decompress between turns. And I really like that fact of this game. It's one of my favorite things because it's super fun. And because there's those two minutes of intense action, you know those annoying alpha gamers who tell everyone else what to do? They don't have time. I'll be finished playing this, and you're working together like, oh, I'm going over here. Come over here. Let's kill these guys. Oh, I rolled some monsters. I don't want to move mine. Can you move those over there? There's that. But sometimes I'll look up, and I'll be like, okay. And I'll, oh, wow, you did that? I didn't even notice what the other person's doing because I was so busy just. Ah, I love it. It's so much fun. And the game is really, really good at scaling the difficulty. One of my problems I have today with, with cooperative games is they feel like they need to come out the gate, smack you down, kick you, pour dirt on you, kick you five more times, and then I go, guess what, buddy? That was the easiest level. You want to try nightmare mode? I don't necessarily like that. I don't mind if there's a nightmare mode in games, but I want to have fun. And to me, being squashed mercilessly under the thumb of the game isn't fun. Well, in this one... 
If you think that the game is too hard, you can go down to the easy level. You can... Uh, you, there's many different ways you can play. Like on this game, the longer board is easier than the wider board. You can play on that board. You can make it so that the first round of each game, there's not a boss that comes out. It's just a blank card every time. There's so many ways to mess with it, and then there are so many ways to make it harder, and the game does a really good job of scaling for the number of players. I, You can play it solo with two. I haven't done that yet. I'm not really even interested in it. Uh, but it does scale well. I've played with two, three, and four. I've not played with five or six. You can. I just, I, I don't even know if that would be a bad thing. I mean, everyone's running around the board. There's even more aliens. We're all just running around yelling and having a great time. Every game of Project Elite that I've ever played is a story. Having the special abilities of the characters is also good. Each character has like one thing that's just cool about that character. And then you get that gun. And that's your gun. You know how your gun works. And oh, there's a lot of replayability. And this is all in the base box. Every game you don't know what bosses are going to show up. You don't know, I mean, these three basic monsters, you're going to certainly get used to them enough. But that's okay. I don't need to know seven different basic monsters. Three is fine. The way the boss monsters come out, if you play with the events, they're going to be different. You'll certainly probably have different weapons each game. <laughs> I love it. So this is probably not necessarily for people who don't like real-time cooperative games. Although I think there's a lot of us out there who do enjoy them. And this is one where it's super stressful for two minutes, but then you calm down and play again. And it's just rollicking fun. This is adventure in a box. This is Starship Troopers, um, Aliens, the, the second one. Uh, just You're sitting there, everyone's having a good time. It's stressful but entertaining, and you feel like you accomplished some fun things. Definitely worth trying out. That's Project Elite. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent.